In this video, we are going to see the summary of George Orwell's A Day in the Life of a Tramp. George Orwell was an English writer. His period was between 1903 and 1950. Let's see the biography of George Orwell. George Orwell was an English novelist, essayist, journalist and literary critic. His original name is Eric Arthur Blair and his pen name is George Orwell. He was born on June 25, 1903 in Bengal Presidency, British India. He was raised and educated in England. After school, he became an imperial policeman in Burma. Inspired by the name of his favorite location, River Orwell, he made George Orwell as his pen name in January 1933. When in London, he worked as a teacher and bookseller. Between late 1920s and early 1930s, he published his first books. Then he became very popular. He was wounded fighting in the Spanish Civil War. Then during the Second World War, he worked as a journalist for the BBC. He produced literary criticism, poetry, fiction and polemical journalism. Animal Farm, 1984, The Road to Wagon Pyre, Homage to Catalonia are his important works. His work remains influential in popular culture and in political culture. He was a member of Independent Labour Party from 1938. He died on January 21st, 1950 in London, England at the age of 46. The Times ranked him second among the 50 greatest British writers since 1945. Now let's see a brief introduction about the essay A Day in the Life of a Tram written by George Orwell. It is an essay about the life of trams in England. A tram means a person who travels from place to place on foot in search of work or as a vagrant or beggar. He is a homeless person who travels around and lives by begging. According to George Orwell, a tram is a native English species. He has no money, no job, no home and no family. He has no possessions in the world apart from the rags covering his body. He lives at the expense of the community. He is a wanderer living on charity. He walks about 20 kilometers a day. He never sleeps two nights together in the same place. He roams around on foot for years and crosses England from end to end many times. Tramps population in England is very high. They are numerous in number. Their population is 100,000 in England and Wales. The age of the tramps ranges from 16 to 70. We can find around two women for every 50 tramps. These people are more in number due to the bad unemployment problem in England. The tramp is unemployed as a result of the state of the poor English economy. The tramp does not wander for his own amusement or because he has inherited the nomadic instincts of his ancestors. He is trying first and foremost to avoid starving to death. To exist, the tram must have helped by public or private charity. To assist him, the authorities have created workhouses. In workhouses, the destitute can find food and shelter. These trams are unfortunate inhabitants of one of the richest countries in the world. The workhouses are otherwise known as spikes. It is a public shelter for the homeless people. It provides food and shelter for trams. Spikes are about 20 kilometers apart. No one can stay in any one spike more than once a month. Trams must seek a new resting place every night. Now let's see a picture of a spike. Like this, we can find many spikes in England. These places are about 20 kilometers apart throughout England. Now let us see what sort of life the tramps lead. It will be sufficient to look at just one day. So now we are going to see the routine life of a tramp. A tramp comes out of the spike at about 10 in the morning. He is about 20 kilometers from the next workhouse. He will probably take 5 hours to walk the distance. He will not rest much on the way because the police look on tramps with a suspicious eye. 
he will arrive at his destination at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon the spike does not open until 6 in the evening he has to wait for three weary hours outside along with other tramps who are already waiting these people look like a herd of human beings haggard unshaven filthy and tortured herd of tramps grows from minute to minute soon there are a hundred unemployed men representing nearly every trade they are the victims of an employment there are around two women for every 50 tramps they are physically and mentally weak they talk meaningless words their clothes are tortured and filthy their faces make us think of the face of some wild animal not perhaps a dangerous one but one which has become at once savage and timorous through lack of rest and care they wait lying on the grass or squatting in the dust they cannot beg because begging is against the law of england they remain idle exchanging vague words in a strange slang which cannot be found in any dictionary they have come from all four corners of england and wales they tell each other their adventures without much hope of finding any work on the way many have met before in some spike at the other end of the country all the tramps smoke outside the spike during waiting hours because smoking is forbidden inside the spikes their tobacco consists mainly of cigarette ends which they pick up in the streets and roads they roll it in paper or stuff it into old pipes the spikes are built in some distant suburb they might be mistaken for a prison the opening time of the spike is 6 o'clock in the evening at 6 o'clock the tramps have got up and are queuing by the wall of the huge building heavy gates swing open and herd of tramps enter inside the spikes we can see the resemblance between spike and the prison everything is ugly and sinister in the spike the prison atmosphere can be found everywhere uniformed officials belly the tramps and push them about they remind them that in coming into the workhouse they have given up all their rights and all their freedom in the spikes the uniformed officials control the tramps in the spike tramps name and trade are written in a register he is made to have a bath his clothes and personal possessions are taken away he is given a coarse cotton workhouse shirt for the night if he has any money it will be confiscated if he has more than 2 francs he will not be allowed into the spike he has to find a bed somewhere else tramps who have more than 2 francs hide their money in the toes of their boots making sure they are not observed for this fraud they could be punished with imprisonment after his bath the tramp receives his supper it consists of half a pound of bread with a little margarine and a half liter tea the bread made specially for tramps is terrible it is gray always stale and has disagreeable taste even the tea is very bad but the tramps drink it gladly as it warms and comforts them after the tiredness of the day after supper they are sent to the cells to spend the night these cells are like real prison cells of brick or stone there is a spy hole on the door which allows the guards to keep an eye on the inmates the size of the cells are about 12 feet by 6 there is no artificial light the only source of light is a narrow barred window very high up in the wall the tramps have to sleep on the floor with only three blankets for bedding there are often no pillows they are allowed to roll their coats into a sort of cushion for their heads usually the room is terribly cold and as a result of long use the blankets have become so thin that they offer no protection at all against the severity of the cold as soon as the tramps entered their cells the doors are firmly bolted on the outside it will not be opened until 7 o'clock next morning usually there are two inmates in each cell 
locked up in cells for 12 hours they suffer cruelly from the cold and the lack of the most basic comforts the places are nearly always bug infested and he spends hours and hours tossing and turning in a vain wait for sleep the willy wall tramps spend their nights talking they will rest for an hour or two next day in a field under some hedge younger ones struggle and groan in the darkness waiting impatiently for the morning to bring their release at seven o'clock in the morning cells are unlocked it is the time for the doctor's visit the doctor is usually late the traps will not be released until this formality is completed they line up half naked in a passage to get an idea of their physical condition among the traps many of them have congenital malformations several suffer from hernias and wear trousers almost everyone has deformed feet covered in sores as a result of lengthy tramping in ill fitting boots the old men are nothing but skin and bone their emaciated features premature wrinkles unshaven beards everything about them tells of insufficient food and lack of sleep finally the doctor has come he glances at each of the tramps in turn rapidly up and down and front and back he checks them in a haste the authorities do not bother about their health unless they are affected by infectious diseases like smallpox after the doctor's inspection the tramps get dressed again they wear clothes mostly begged from door to door their clothes are grotesque ill-fitting too long too short too big or too small and their strangeness would make you laugh they have been repaired as far as possible with all kinds of patches and missing buttons some of them have no underclothes many do not even have socks once they are dressed the tramps receive their breakfast identical to the previous night's supper then they are lined up in the yard of the spike where the gods set them to work some will wash the floor others will chop wood break coal and do a variety of jobs until 10 o'clock the tramps have to do these types of works in a spike they are given back any personal property confiscated the previous evening then they are given half a pound of bread and a piece of cheese for their midday meal sometimes a ticket is offered to them which can be exchanged at a specific cafes along with a way for bread and tea to the value of 3 francs they are sent out of the spike at or after 10 o'clock in the morning they scatter over the countryside each one is making for a fresh spike there he will be treated exactly the same way for months years decades the tramps will know no other existence till now we have seen the life of a tramp in a day now let us see some more information about the tramps a tramp consumes around 750 grams of bread with a little margarine and cheese and a pint of tea a day this is clearly an insufficient diet for a man who must cover 20 kilometers a day on foot for other needs like tobacco clothing and additional food sometimes he begs or steals begging is against the law of england so many tramps get imprisoned it is a vicious circle if he does not beg he dies of starvation if he begs he is breaking the law life of the tramps is degrading and demoralizing it can make an active man unemployable and a sponger the life of a tram is desperately monotonous the only pleasure for tramps is coming by a few shillings unexpectedly this gives them the chance to eat their fill for once or to go on a drinking spree tramp is cut off from women so homosexuality is not unknown to them a tramp is simply a victim of unemployment he has not committed any crime but he is condemned to live more wretchedly than the worst criminal he is a slave with a semblance of liberty which is worse than the most cruel slavery a tramp has a miserable destiny the society would be treating him more kindly by shutting him up for the remainder of his days in prison where he would at least enjoy relative comfort 
till now in this video we have seen the summary of george orwell's a day in the life of a tramp hope you would have understood it clearly thank you for listening